Hello everyone, welcome to part 9 of the Python Basics tutorial series. We'll be going over tuples today. So tuples are simply sequences just like lists. One of the main differences, however, are that tuples cannot be changed. They're considered immutable. Whereas lists, as we learned earlier, with a list, you can update or modify the various elements of a list. They're considered mutable. So tuples can use parentheses. As you'll see here, I have parentheses, basically an empty tuple assigned to the variable tup1. Um, whereas with a list, all we had to have before was just square brackets and you know some elements in between, okay? So if I have a tuple with a single element in it, it's important to note that you can't just have the element, but you also have to have a comma uh, after the element. Otherwise, Python's not gonna recognize it as a tuple. In this case, it'll recognize it as an integer. Um, what's really cool about tuples, I guess interesting, um, is you don't really need the parentheses here. You just have to have the element followed by a comma, and then Python will recognize it as a tuple. Okay, um, as you'll see down below, a lot of times people don't include the parentheses here, and it can take a little getting used to uh, for new Python programmers. Um, but I assure you, if you practice enough, you'll get it. Okay, and I'll get into why a lot of programmers uh, typically write code without the parentheses in a minute. Okay, but first we'll go over accessing values in tuples, basically taking a slice of a tuple. So if I have a bunch of elements, but I don't want all of them, typically I'll use a slice. So it's important to note that in Python, the first element of the tuple is at index zero. So the string A is at index zero. The string B is at index one, and so on and so forth. So the way to take a slice of a tuple is you have a tuple and then something inside square brackets. So everything to the left of the colon is the index you want to start at. And then everything to the right is up to, but not including the element corresponding to that index. So what that means, at least for practical applications, is I want the element at index zero, um, and then I want the element at index one, but I don't want the element at, in, at index two. So I get the string A and the string B. So if I don't have anything to the left of the colon, that means I just start at index zero, and then I go up and two, up until, but not including the element corresponding to index three. So I basically just get the strings A, B, and C. So like lists, you can also have negative indexes. So an, the element at negative one is D, the element at negative two is C, and so on and so forth. So as I said earlier, tuples are immutable, which means that you cannot update or change the value of tuple elements. However, you can take portions of existing tuples to create new tuples, um, as I'll demonstrate down below. Okay, so I have tup1 and I have tup2. And while I can't modify these individual tuples, what I can do is make an entirely new tuple. Okay, so tup1 um, plus tup2 basically just is concatenation where the first two elements of the new tuple is the what was in tup1 and the last element was from tup2 okay okay so one common thing you'll see with python is people typically use tuples for sequence unpacking and i'll go into what that means in a second but when you see something like this what this means is that seven is assigned to the variable X and then 10 is assigned to the variable Y. To the right of the equal sign, 
this is just a tuple as we've seen before. I could easily just have put the parentheses here and this would have been equivalent. And the way this works is everything to the right of the parentheses, you have to have an equal number of elements assigned to an equal number of variables. So while this would work, if I had more elements than variables, I'll get an error with Python. Okay. Okay. So one function you might commonly use with Python is the enumerate function. And basically, if you're iterating through a for loop, what enumerate does is it returns um, an element as well as the index corresponding to that element. And what this is here is simply just a tuple. So the index, so Steve is at index zero, and I also get Steve, which is the element, and so on and so forth. So if you feel like you're good enough right now with tuples, you don't have to continue to the task. I would recommend it though, and I'll go over the task right now. So this task is an interview question, which I've actually been asked as kind of like a weeder question, basically to find out who programs and who doesn't. People commonly use very, very simple um, like interview questions just to weed out people so they can go about their day and not waste hours interviewing someone, okay? So if you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, is the Fibonacci sequence is an integer sequence characterized by the fact that every number after the first two is a sum of the two preceding ones. So one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, and so on and so forth. What I've printed here is the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. And our task will be using a looping technique, write a Python program, which prints out the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. So what I've done over here is I'm basically assigning one to the variable A, this is the first Fibonacci number, and I'll assign one to the variable B, which is gonna be the second Fibonacci number. And as you'll see down below, um, is this is the first Fibonacci number, and then B will just be the next Fibonacci number. So as you go through the list, as you'll kind of see that I have diagonals here, and B becomes A, as you'll see over here, and then A plus B will become the new value of B. So let me try to go over this for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I should note this is only one of the solutions to the Fibonacci sequence as like a coding challenge. People use recursion for this, people use generators and so on and so forth. So let's go through this for loop. So basically I'll be iterating 10 times uh, through this code here. And so what I'll first do for the first iteration is I'll print the current value of A, which is one, and the current value of B, this is gonna be the second Fibonacci number. And then I'll assign the current value of B, which is one, to the variable A. So one will be assigned to A for the second iteration. So in the second iteration, you're gonna print out the second Fibonacci number, which is one. And then what I'll also do is I'll have one, plus one, which will be assigned to B, which is obviously two. And if you don't understand this, please let me know. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to these little coding challenges. Um, I recommend you just play with um, tuple unpacking and this will be a lot simpler. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'd appreciate if you subscribe. I should also note that the code here is in my GitHub and I'll link, leave a link down below. Thanks, bye.